Stranger Things Season 4 has the best of everything when it comes to 80s wardrobe, makeup, and hairstyles, as well as creepy prosthetics. This means thousands of hours dedicated to the makeup chair that we're taking a little peek behind the scenes at. Number 1. Even Vecna's claw is all practical effects. Vecna is 90% prosthetics. Jamie Campbell Bower had to have 2,425 different appliances on him. When they initially tested the prosthetic, it took them roughly eight and a half hours, but they managed to whittle that down to six. So, for a 7 a.m. start time, he would be in the chair at 1 a.m. Every part of him was covered in some way. He had dentures over his teeth that looked rotten and blackened. He had contact lenses. And Vecna's left hand was also done with practical effects, using a metal framework. The only thing that was really done in post was his veins or vines or whatever you want to call them. Number 2. It takes effort to get that no effort look Eleven was going for. Hi guys, I'm getting ready to go to work. I'm just waiting on my coffee. While it may not seem like Jane, sorry, Eleven puts much work into her outfits, behind the scenes is a whole other story. I think it takes about, I'd say an hour. Why is that the case when she barely wears any makeup? The most I have is a bit of mascara and some blush. Well, out of all the young cast, Millie Bobby Brown takes the longest. A full hour to get ready because of her wig. Yeah, we need to find out an yes. outfit that I get arrested in. I've never thought I'd ever have to say that sentence. <laughs> and Millie and Noah have way too much energy for it being early in the morning. Uh, good, morning. good morning! You know who doesn't seem like a morning person? Who we bet finds this peppy enthusiasm annoying? Joe Keery. Number three. You'd think if you were possessed, the last thing you'd see is white. The white contacts were no picnic. Wearing them was described as being in a bright white room all by yourself. The first time the actors put on the white contacts, the costume designer filmed their experience to try and make it an event and take the stress off their inability to see properly. Oh, um, did they put contacts in you? Yeah. Were they uncomfy? Yeah. Number four. There isn't enough money in the world somebody could offer us to do this role. Robert England played Victor Creel, who, once in costume, could neither speak nor see, and his hands were bound to the chair. He could only communicate through yes or no questions and nods. It took him about two hours in the makeup chair. He just loved telling the makeup artists, who were huge fans of his work as Freddy Krueger, stories. He's incredibly comfortable with all the materials after years of using them, so he knew what they were all for. He knew when to close his eyes and turn his head, and the makeup artists just loved him. Number 5. Gaten's invented a whole new hairstyle called Hat Hair Supreme. Heading up to my trailer. Looks like the sun is still just rising, so Gaten Matarazzo definitely didn't have to spend six hours in a chair. I'm about to go get ready, put on my uniform. Let's get it. Gaten is sent home with some really amazing skincare products. And I never use them. And you might not have known, his hair is perfectly slicked back under that hat. And it looks ridiculous. We don't know. That could be a style, you know, like a horizontal mullet situation. Business on top. Dustin takes just slightly more time than Finn. He's in the 20-25 minute range, but if he has a cap on, which he usually does, then it takes even less time. Gaten's character Dustin has been starting to put more effort into his looks too. Fair faucet spray? Yeah, fair faucet. If you're hoping to get Steve's luscious long locks, you're out of luck. The product is no longer produced. I should probably go to work now. Number six. Finn basically gets to roll out of bed and right onto the set. Hi. Finn has it easy compared to all the actors who take ages getting prosthetics on. Yeah, it's, I, I become Mike in 20 minutes. It's about the time. So I think you, you might be the fastest right now. Well, he's competing for best time with another member of the cast. Can you guess who? Number seven. David had a major transformation from season three to four, then back to three again briefly. David must be the, now must be the, the shortest. Okay, but he's covered in dirt and prosthetics. He doesn't have as much hair though this season. Makeup. Makeup. 
David was prepping long before shooting began because he had to trim down his dad bod to look like the roughed up, malnourished hopper we see this season. For flashback purposes, Harbor had to get decked out in prosthetics again because his face just looked too thin. Harbor's pretty comfortable with gaining and losing weight for roles. This is not even close to the first time he's done it. Although we bet putting on the weight is much more fun. Number eight, best wig award goes to Joseph Quinn. Yes, this was the wig, and Eddie Munson, the character that we never knew we needed out of Stranger Things. Number nine. Then they placed it on his head, and he became Dustin Henderson. A lot of people don't realize that the hat was never planned. It was never meant to be such a defining character trait. We just went to the fitting rooms one day, and then they had some baseball cap. Not just Gaten. All of the characters were trying on hats. And I put one on, and I was like, that's funny. They did it for one photo. A goofy hat for one shot, and it just stuck. The rest is history. Number 10. Do those suction cup things actually stick or not? Dude, why is it so giant? I didn't realize it would be so big. An oversized arrow on your forehead all day would get pretty annoying, we bet. Number 11. Answer revealed. Finn is tied with Sadie for being such low maintenance. Perhaps that's because everyone but the Sadie Sink is decked out in wigs and prosthetics and makeup, and she's still just the cool skater kid who doesn't really care. Plus, her natural hair is gorgeous. Why would you cover that up? She only takes 20 minutes to get ready, too. Hair is typically 10 minutes. Makeup is five minutes, and another five for costume. It's seriously just not fair to the others. It's not that bad. We would guess Noah would be pretty quick, too, but alas, the poor boy is wigged. He'd be more in the Millie department. Number 12. The lost boy can be found buried beneath dirt and sugar. Cornelius made a small appearance, but left a lasting impression on all of us. His makeup was inspired by Lost Boys, and one small detail we appreciate is that they put lip gloss on his lips to make it look like he'd been eating sticky candy. The dirt is in the details. Number 13. The return of Dacre means the return of more ridiculous prosthetics for him. If the gooey prosthetics mess at the end of the day is any indication of how nasty the application process was, <laughs> it had two equal early mornings. And they not only had to do all these prosthetics on Dacre, they also had to duplicate them on his stunt double. Imagine having double the work because the actors are too valuable to break. Number 14. We call this one Road Rash Chic. We adore seeing a sleepy Joe pre Farrah Fawcett wandering in to get his day started. His road rash prosthetics were done by Autonomous FX. The prosthetics look disgusting, if we do say so ourselves. Good job, team. Number 15. These wee beans were all having fun the whole shoot. It's too bad their characters weren't. It's no secret that all of the patients in the asylum look just a bit sickly, and Peter Ballard is no exception. The goal was to suck the life out of their skin, and they did that with a color-correcting cream in intended to neutralize redness. Outside of Jamie Campbell Bauer, the patients also got an added layer of wrinkle FX makeup. Number 16. Wigs are at least 30% of the personality of this show. Look at my wig. Fabulous fit. Kara, who plays Karen Wheeler, got to wear an awesome wig this season. The very Vogue look of 1986. It's cut with shorter layers on top to show off that fabulous perm. The look was inspired by Kate Capshaw in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Number 17. Would you cut your hair for a role? Grace had her hair cut for the role of Chrissy. Nothing over the top, they just trimmed it a bit shorter to give it some beautiful volume. She had it dyed with highlights to match the topper wig, which are used to add volume to thin hair. Number 18. Sometimes simple is best. Agent Harmon, the man who gets shot trying to move the kids to safety, had to deal with a ton of blood. The makeup artist said, This was a fun, bloody mess of a makeup. We bet it wasn't too difficult, though. Less gutsy than some of their other stuff. Dacre, we're looking at you. Number 19. Why does this one give us scarecrow vibes? It's the nose. Definitely the nose. Even without CGI, this would make for a fun Halloween costume. Number 20. We wish there were more shows set in the 80s. The aesthetic is just perfect if you ask us. It screams fun. Something that is totally lacking in this generation. 
If you watched over 60 of our videos, you'd finally arrive at the time it took for Jamie Campbell Bauer to get into his prosthetic suit. While that sounds like an ideal way to spend a day, you should probably go and enjoy some sunshine. Were you blown away by the style they brought to Stranger Things this season? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for hanging out with us here at The Things.